After analyzing Junior Seau's brain, researchers at the National Institutes of Health say the renowned NFL linebacker had a progressive brain disorder called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. The degenerative condition has long been known to affect boxers, but professional athletes aren't the only ones at risk of getting CTE. Joining me with their expertise on the subject are neurovascular surgeon Alexander Kalesi and Phil Lomax, coach and commissioner of San Diego Youth Football and Shear. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Dr. Kalesi, what causes CTE and how are you able to diagnose it? Well, the diagnosis, unfortunately, despite our sophisticated neuroimaging, is still an autopsy diagnosis. So only after a patient passes away and we look at sections of their brain under a microscope can we confirm a diagnosis of CTE. Uh, the cause uh, is something of an open question, but it's clear to us now that it's due to repetitive blows uh, to the head, often in close proximity to one another. And that's what leads to de cells dying in very particular parts of the brain. So back-to-back -back brain trauma, blast trauma, things that would cause a concussion. Right, precisely right, yeah. A concussion is a clinical diagnosis based on the symptoms that, that a person has immediately after that blow to the head. But if you have multiple in close proximity, or especially if your symptoms haven't resolved before you sustain another blow to the head, that's when, when the, the risk of CTE tends to go Let's up. talk about symptoms, but in particular, the disorder, it gets worse over time. So what sort of uh, symptoms does CTE actually lead to? It's a great question. So it, CTE essentially divides into four separate stages. The first usually leads to problems with uh, attention uh, and problems with mood. And as, as time goes on, you actually can develop more dramatic uh, disturbances, both in terms of a mood, you can develop depressive episodes or erratic behavior. And in this third stage, that's when you start to get into cognitive decline, and you can actually start to develop a more progressive dementia at, at that fourth stage or the very end stage. And this process tends to play out over two to nine years. Okay, rather, relatively short. Relatively um, short, course. Coach Phil, I want to ask you this. Researchers at Boston University, uh, they recently confirmed 50 cases of CTE in former uh, football players. 33 of those players played in the NFL, but six were in high school. Uh, I also, they, they were high school football players uh, right. where this was uh, found. But I found this disturbing video on YouTube that I want to show you. Um, let's take a look at it. It's titled, The Hardest Illegal Hit Ever. Uh, it has more than 5 million views, and the disturbing part is that many of the comments applauded this tackle, saying things like, this is how it's done, son, this is how the game is played. What is the uh, awareness level among high school and college coaches right now about CTE? Well, I think in the high school and college levels, because of the measures the NFL is taking, I think you can see locally with CIF and also with, with the college level, that uh, programs are taking steps to reduce the amount of hitting that goes on. And the key thing that you see different now is that the players are being restricted uh, from returning to play until their symptoms have gone away. So I think that's one of the key components in changing the culture of football is ensuring that we're taking the safety of the player as the primary objective and ensuring that, uh, that the player has no longer had any concussion type symptoms before they return to play. I know some of the hockey teams do that now. Uh, when somebody's been knocked out, they take them off the ice and don't let them play. I have one, uh, Phil, let me ask you this. What about the safety precautions going on right now in the youth sports programs? You're, you're taking them off the field. Is there anything else? Well, there's a, a variety of measures, and I'm glad that you asked that question. Um, you know, we've, for the last 10 years at least, we've been doing concussion assessments, establishing baselines so that we can identify if a, if a kid does have a traumatic head injury occur. Uh, that we can assess them somewhat at the field before we do anything else. In addition to that, we've taken great measures to ensure that our coaches know how to properly fit players with helmets. Helmet fitting is a key component as well. And as Doc mentioned earlier, um, you know, it's important that we, we also teach the, the players the proper way in order to tackle, the proper way in order to approach the game. And then we also have reduced the amount of hitting that goes on throughout the week. Reducing the amount of hitting and ensuring the players have the right, right equipment is good.
All right, we have time for one last question, Dr. Kalasi. Um, after Sayal's diagnosis, the NFL issued a statement basically saying that they wanted Congress to take a look at safety issues. Uh, they also said they've committed $30 million already to the NIH uh, study, uh, to, to, to study CTE, and they're going to consider another $100 million for research on uh, impact injuries in football. How do you think this money should be spent, considering that CTE is diagnosed post-mortem? It's a, it's a terrific question. I, I think that from my perspective as a medical provider, it, it, whenever you actually see a large research effort like this undertaken, the first step is to characterize the problem. And I think that from my perspective, what's so important is actually to have the opportunity to follow a large number of players over time. I, I think the coach emphasized the appropriate things in terms of improved tackling technique. And looking at that video, you're looking at a special teams play where someone left their feet and led with their head. I think that we're seeing now with improved techniques that you're actually seeing those concussions go way down. And from my perspective, in terms of how that money can be spent, I think that we can actually get better and more rigorous scales about a sideline concussion assessment so we make sure that we're taking those players out and then can develop a little bit more sophisticated neuroimaging so this is no longer an autopsy diagnosis that we can pick up very, very subtle brain injury, obviously, when it first occurs. All right, we'll certainly be following this. Thank you both so much for talking with thank us. Thank you oh, for having thank us. Thank you for having us.